the, the subject of the text this morning is living by the golden rule. Okay. Living by the golden rule. All right. The text starts at Matthew 7 chapter 12 verse reads, Do to others whatever you would like them to do unto you. This is the essence of all that is taught in the law and the prophets. Living by the golden rule. Now, God's golden rule is different from ours. When you are here in the world, I remember Brother Hill stated that the one who has the gold makes the rule. The one who has everything, or one who has the, the, the biggest amount, the highest amount, whoever got the money. You know, back there was a time when money, there was no money. People bought it. We traded, or they traded. If you got a cow and I need a cow, then I'll trade you whatever you need to get that cow, because I need it. It might have been mules, it might have been birds, whatever they needed, they traded for it. So, whatever they needed. The other person had more of it, then he was on the high level of the lot, high run. And the other person was on the low, because I had something you need, I could raise the well I gave Brother Hopkins that that, that cow for, for two mules, but since you need one too, and I got five, I might have to give four or five mules from you. See, because I have something you need. We aren't following the golden rule. We're following the rule that whoever has the gold, whoever has the most of what you need, makes the rule. I don't have to sell my cow for five dollars when you need one. I can raise the price of my cow. All right. But you see, God's love is dependent on what you need. All right, now. All God's right. love is dependent on you. Uh huh. See. Let me, let, me, let me describe something for you. When you are, let me make it personal. When I was out there in the world, there was nothing Christ needed for me. I had nothing he needed. I had nothing I needed. I was lost out here in the world. And Christ saw fit to save me, not because he needed me, All right now. but because he loved me. Yes. You, you know how I found that out. When you're going through life in this world, you, you you look at what everybody else has got. Some people are, when I first found out that we were poor, I said, I didn't say poor. We were poor. When I was going to school, so we started school to see what past these people getting on the bus to these, they had these nice houses, well, not nice, houses a lot nicer than ours. You found out where you stood in the world. People working at the mill back then, my daddy was a mechanic and getting pretty much what anybody was paying for what he did. Because the job he had wasn't paying him a whole lot. So we didn't have a whole lot. You see people getting out there, going to school the first day, they had nice clothes on. And we had the one pair of shoes we got that well, should last that whole year. We got them from... <laughs> Y'all don't know me, man. P.P. Sterlock down there. Oh, yeah. You got them old broke iron shoes down there. If you tore them shoes up, you was working on them. Because them shoes wouldn't tear up for nothing. Because when you got home from school, you had to take them off. Because if you wore them out, then you got those stupid boy shoes the rest of the year. So when you all got home, you took those shoes off. And if it was one of the times you wore the shoes that you had last year with the holes in them. Until it was time to go to bed. See, we found out that time we didn't have much, but we had each other. That's right. And we had a love of God Amen. that our mother, our family, instilled in us. Uh -huh. I remember my Bible study of my deacon Jane was talking about how our mother made all of us sing together. Amen. Had a choir. Whether you wanted to or not, you stayed in the house, you going to sing. One of us had an old broom. <laughs> Somebody had the other hand another mop singing in it. 
But all the children, the grand, the, the cousins were saying, if you let the house of God, you're going to sing. Amen. Mama's going to make sure of that. You're going to learn your Bible verses. Mm -hmm. And you're going to learn something about the love of God. Uh -huh. And we learned that no matter what we ha didn't have, what we had was a God on our side. Amen. I remember in the evening when it was time to go to bed, I'd give my mother get down on her knees and pray. Mm. I'll never forget that. Mm. I she prayed for us. She wouldn't start out saying anything you could hear. But when she got wind up, yeah. uh -huh. Amen. when she started crying out, uh -huh. and I remember when my mama had, y'all know may not, the rest of my siblings in may not know this, but when my mama had to go down and sign up a food. How that hurt. See, when you don't have a lot, you learn how to depend on God. Amen. Y'all yeah. didn't hear that. Yeah. See, the more you have, the harder you find it is to depend on God. But you think what that bank account is going to get you through. Amen. You think those, those people that work for you is going to get you through. You think that job you got is going to get you through. But when you lose that bank account, All right. All right. when you lose that job, mm -hmm. you find out that the golden rule not only applies to the one who had the gold, <laughs> All right now. it applies to the, only one, the one who only thing he has is that rule. Because if you do unto others uh -huh. as you would to yourself, mm -hmm. All right. if you love that person who's in need, then they don't have to ask you. All right. All right. See, y'all didn't get that. Yeah. If, if, if you love that person, you see them struggling, you don't, they don't have to ask you. Now, do you have that you can give. God has already spoken to you. All right. And told you what you need to do. Amen. People don't have to ask you if you know right. they in need. Amen. The love of God will show through you. Let me tell you what our golden rule is. You know what, why they call it golden rule? Back in those days, gold was the most expensive thing they had. Most expensive metal. Gold. The most expensive are the most precious metal. The most precious rule that you can have is that golden rule. They, they didn't have platinum back then. They didn't have uranium back then, but they had gold. Mm -hmm. And whoever had the gold made the rule. Whatever is precious to you, you got to be willing to give it away. Mm -hmm. Because God gave away the most precious thing to Him. Amen. His Son, Jesus Christ, that you and I would be in His family. And have a right and have access to the tree of life. Because before we had access, we were strangers mm -hmm. out here on this road. Even the best of me, the best of me, good me, goodness won't get you in there. Amen. Amen. I don't care how good you are. Goodness will not get you in hell. You have to have the blood of Christ covering your sin. We are all sinners out here trying to make it in. And without the love of Christ, you ain't got a chance. Amen. Amen. I don't care if you sitting up here Amen. or you sitting way back there on the floor. Amen. We're all the same. Amen. We're all Sinner looking for a seed, trying to do what God wants us to do. Amen. And if I can't do, if I'm having a hard time living the life, imagine that person back there that doesn't have anything. Mm -hmm. That depends on people like me. Amen. Just drop in here three or four times a week and make sure everything is all right. What about my people? 
What about those that are called by my name? All right, all right. You have to make sure they're all right. I was reading an illustration, and it caught my, actually it was a, 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 one of the Grimm brothers' books. An excerpt came up on Facebook. And I read it for some reason, and it just, that's how all this came to God. Gee, I don't know why God uses what he uses, but I, I just accept whatever it is he uses. That's right. That was a old man, and his wife had passed, and his son had married and had a wife and a little son. And they, they were sitting at the dinner table. The old man was living with them because he couldn't make it on his own. And he had gotten old way he had to shift. And he was trying to eat. And every time he'd get, he would eat, he'd, he'd lose some off his fork, off his spoon, and, and it would fall on the table. And he, when he reached in his plate with the spoon, it would rattle, and the, 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 his daughter-in-law was upset because they had a little, a little statue in the community. And he's sitting at the table with them, and they couldn't invite anybody over because he was missing. He was shaking, and he was rattling, and he was just like a child. She got upset with him and she told her husband to put him in the corner. Put him in a stool in the corner. Let him turn his back to us. Let him eat over there. I don't even want to look at him. Mm. And he got the shakes even worse. And after a couple of weeks, well, I said, without they said after a short time, him eating over there, he had a bowl and he got the shaking and the bowl fell and broke. And she really got upset. Mm. Told him. If you're going to act like a pig and break my, my dishes, then you need to build a trough for him to eat out of it. So he built a trough for him to eat out of it. Mm. Build a trough. And one day, the man, the son, was there. And after he had finished talking to his wife about that, he went outside and saw his little boy working with a little piece of plastic or something. And and building on something. Son, what you doing? I'm building a trough so when I get up, when y'all get old, I have something to feed y'all out of. <laughs> Do unto her. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Do unto her. The little story went on and said the next day he was eating back at the table with his family. Do unto her. See, we have a golden rule that we apply to our family. We have a golden rule, another one that we apply to our neighbors. We have even another one that we apply to our folks we work with. We have a we have a rule that we apply. Not as Christ, but God would apply it to us and our our living. Not that we would love our neighbors as God loves us. Not that we love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Not that we would do unto others as we would do unto ourselves. We just have what we call a semblance of godliness that we show to different people. I show a different level of godliness to my family than I do to my friends or my neighbors. I show a little more passion when it comes to my family, but even less passion when it comes to my neighbors. And even less than that when it comes to people I don't know. Because, you know, I, I, I'm a church man, I'm a godly man, but I don't know them. Well, see, that's where the godliness comes in. All right. Do unto others yes. as you would have them do unto you. Matthew 22, 36 to 39, the teacher, which is the most important commandment in the law of Moses? Mm -hmm. Jesus replied, the most, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. The second is equally important. All right. All right. Love your neighbor as yourself. Who is our neighbor? You. The, the golden rule serves to be a perfect summary of our, the kind of righteousness God expects of us. He expects of us to show the love of God, even if we don't know. That's right. He expects that love of God to show through us no matter when we are, no matter where we are, 
no matter how we are, no matter who we are, you can be the path and you can be expected to go and clean somebody's toilet. All right. You can be the path and you can be expected to go and feed somebody's seat or go and wash their dishes. It isn't for the pastor to go and tell deacons, I expect y'all to go over there and see how the sister doing. See how the brother doing over there. I heard he was ill and you need to go. I need to be the example. When more is given, more is required. And I'm not talking about, you know, I've seen some pastors, I know y'all have, but when they get to be the pastor, then they figure they got more delegation authority. I can delegate to this deacon to go there, and this deacon to go here, and this sister to go here. But we have to be the example. We not have to show the love of Christ. We have to be the love of Christ. Mm. Because there are others who are here watching us. That's right. Looking at us to see how we handle what we handle. There are times in your life when you don't want to go, you don't feel like going, and matter of fact, I ain't going. <laughs> y'all know it, y'all ain't, I ain't the only one. And then after a while, yeah, the song that you sit down and have a little talk with Jesus. Yeah. Uh -huh. Lord, I'm sorry, I'm going. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, I'm going. And my mama said, Boy, you can be good for the ministry. For God, he'll discipline those that he loves. Right. And he loves himself some powerful, so you know, I'm the first one. That if I don't do, God will let me know, and he'll keep me up all night. Lord, I'm sorry. I, I, I won't do it no more. Can I please go to sleep now? Let me just tell you. If you love somebody, they all know. Amen. Pray. You love Christian. Yes, you think she know? Yes, sir. That's right. That's right. I'd ask any man in here if that child loves her. They're going to say yes. They come to her. Does your neighbor know you love her? Oh. Come on now. You know, I, 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 I don't tell up on myself now. I have been living next door to my neighbor. Uh, it's in 1995. And when the wife was living, I knew her real well. But she passed. And the gentleman gets up real, used to get up real little in the morning. They loaded him. They didn't go out there a whole lot. And I don't know what we were doing, but we, Sandy and I were coming home. And we, Have you seen? This gentleman up in it. No, I hadn't seen him. Like, what about you? No, I hadn't seen him going out of coming in. Do you think he knew I loved him? I had checked on him. I hadn't even seen him. So, I think I went up. I don't say he went up the first day. See him and he, was, he, he had fallen. And he was having a, a nursing. Somebody had come up there. That happened two or three days ago. And I seen the cars go up there, but I didn't see them either. So we decided we'd bring in some food and, and do things and ask for us anything we need. Because you all know I love the bake. So anything, you know, pecan pie, he said, I ain't got no tea. <laughs> <laughs> so you can mean well, the Bible said, do unto others that, you know, if, if I was just going to tell him what I wanted him to have, what was easy for me, I had all the pecans in there, and I could just go whoop up a cake, I mean a pecan pie real quick. I could just go and take that, hey, come. Ain't the thing he could have done with, but gave it away. I would have felt better about it. I done done my duty. I gave him something to eat. I've taken him a couple of years to suck on them pecans. <laughs> it's not what you want. It's doing to others as if, as you want them to do to you. I wouldn't want him giving me something I can do nothing with. That's right. I wouldn't want him giving me something 
to make himself feel good when it wouldn't help me. See, we're all about doing things to make us feel good. When I want to give, I want all the, I want the newspaper there. I want somebody to write a story on Deacon Hot, a pastor Hopkins gave this to the DHR over there so they could help the poor folks. I want them to write a big story about it. I want them to tell the rest of all these other churches they did. Now Trinity did this, this, and this. Uh-uh. That ain't what the word said. They don't let the right hand know what the left hand is doing. All right. All right. Don't let the right hand know but tell the Choctaw son. <laughs> so they can write a story about it. That's the rule that we have to follow. And it ain't man's rule. It's called the golden rule. I don't even hear God tell it. It's doing what's right. Mm -hmm. We have a problem doing what's right. God wants our hearts to be open. If you've got an open heart, then you can receive, but you can also give. When we receive, this, 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 this is good, but we're a lot of folks. When we receive, when we got blessed financially, oh, I'm going out and I'm going to build me some bonds now. I got this big blessing now. Yeah, but I've got enough money to go out and buy, build them some bonds now, and put a few cows in there, get some, get some hay, and be set for a couple of years around here. God blesses us. He increases our bounty. And when God gives you the increase, don't increase your living when you can increase your giving. When God, if, if God has given you more than enough, yeah. when God has met all your needs, according to what you ask for, because sometimes we ask for stuff we don't need, but God, he blesses us abundantly ahead of that. God has met all your needs. God has abundantly blessed us. Oh, I can open that bank account now. I ain't been had no bank account. I think I go out there and repay the stock market. Mm. I don't mind losing a little bit. I got a little bit to lose, but I, I, I'm going to put a little bit of money in the stock. A little bit of money in somebody's plate. All right. A little bit of money in, in their stock. The stock of your church. Mm -hmm. I, I, I've seen all these reports about these pastors buying big planes. And then the congregation drive by these big planes. And they ride in these nice, fine cars. And when people out there in the congregation can't have to take a bus right. to come to church. What about blessing the people that's running? Right. The Bible said that man that won't bless it, his own house is less than an infidel. If you don't take care of your own house, the blessings of this house will start in the house. Start here. If anybody needs anything, they need to start here. We need to start blessing people here. And when we're finished blessing people here, then let it branch out. But how do I look Blessing somebody on the other side of town. Of course, they go up there on the other side of the state where I'm living at. And people right here who are giving up the money need something. Right. Well, Pastor, I ain't got nothing, but I'm going to write this check and I'm going to hope it don't bounce. Mm -hmm. Well, you write it and I'm going to go up here to touch this show and you're going to buy me a truck. <laughs> oh, you know what? Uh, Y'all need to be riding good. Y'all don't want the pastor to look good when he's riding down all these miles. Come on, man. See, and I, I don't know. I wouldn't be afraid of y'all, but I wouldn't be afraid of God. Amen. <laughs> see, I, I don't see how people do. But I need you to know that this rule, this golden rule that we're talking about here, applies to every one of us. Yes, it does. We have to love even the unloved. Y'all know some people that you, it's hard for you to love them. It's hard, that, that waves yeah. make it hard for you to be around. Right. You still got to love them. They got a bad mind. The little money that they do get, they go out and drink it and smoke it. And 
they, they, they just bounce from here to there. Oh, son, you, you, when they come in, those y'all parking back there in the back somewhere. I want them to come with their own smell. You need to be a friend. Yeah. You need to be right where the pastor can lay hands on. You need to be sitting right there. And if you need a place to stay, we need to find a place to stay. We need to pray for them that them demons, them drinking demons, and all that other stuff got them all down. But, get, but leave them alone. Amen. Somebody around here got drug, alcohol problem, and vitamin. That's what they need to be. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The well need not a physician. Yes. Amen. Sick people don't need a hospital. We've all got something we need to work on. Mm -hmm. That's why we come to church. Amen. The Bible says, fail not to assemble yourself okay. together. So we can be helpers one to another. I don't need anything. I don't need your help. I don't need to be here. I'm the pastor. I come every other Sunday. Y'all come every Sunday. Y'all come three or four times a week because y'all need help. Yeah. I don't need the help. I come down here and see what y'all are doing. Maybe one Sunday a month. I'm above that. Yeah. No, I need to be down here. Come on now. What I need y'all to know is this. Christ didn't come down here for you to that all you need, let everybody, everybody worry about themselves. All right. Christ came that we would see the love in, in us. When I tell you I love you, you ought to know it by my actions and everything that I do. When I tell you, when I ask, I should not ask you if you love me. That's right. I should not have to ask you, do you love me? When Jesus asked his disciples, do you love me? Feed mm -hmm. my sheep. Mm -hmm. Well, Peter, do you love me? Lord, you know, feed my sheep. Mm -hmm. Peter, do you? Lord, you know. <laughs> you know. You know. There's a golden rule that says we ought to be helpers one to another. We ought to show the love of Christ one to another. Now, who's going to be the example of that? All right. Who is going to let all the things that you've done go? If I say I'm a, I'm a follower of the Christ, how do you know? Do you see? Oh. Do I look like my picture? Mm -hmm. I got a picture. I used to have it on Facebook. Myself on the road. Do I look like my picture? Do I look like somebody who ought to be giving the word of Christ back? When you aren't looking at that picture of me in that road, but don't, you don't, if I were walking around with a Bible in my hand, walking around with a collar on my neck, do I look like a Christian? Do I act like a Christian? All right. Because if it takes me walking around with the Bible in my hand for you to respect me as a Christian, then I'm doing something wrong. Amen. My actions should tell you I'm a Christian. Amen. My actions should cause you to respect me as a Christian. Now, if I'm not doing that right, somebody need to tell me. Because if I'm doing it wrong, I want to know now before I... Wake up in hell. All right. I don't want to go to hell. And I sure don't want to go to hell because I didn't love somebody right. See, and I'm, 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 I'm sitting now, this is what God gave me, and I gave it to you. But you need to know that no matter what your statue is, statue, but no matter where your place in life is, right. you should be able to show. People should be able to know the love of Christ rests, rules, and abides within you. If they don't know that, check yourself. And so that check yourself before you wreck yourself. Because if you die, 
Not knowing the love of Christ, then I've done something wrong. I have let you go to hell. And the Bible said, the man on the wall, the watchman on the wall, if trouble approaches and he don't give warning, then that blood falls to be. I'm warning you. Each and every one of us has a soul the love of God. The love of God has to be utmost in our life. You ain't perfect. I'm, I'm not perfect. I fail sometimes. But God so loved me. Yes, yes sir. That he gave his only begotten yes, son so that when I fail, he picked me up. Put me back in my right place. In back in my right mind. Because if I fail, I'm out of my right mind. Please. I don't care what you call it, the golden rule, doing what's right. We have to live by I think I put this on Facebook the other day. People will tell you there's no instruction book for life. Instru no instruction book for raising kids. Mm -hmm. I beg to differ. Amen. He left the book. He left all the instructions. Amen. If there's something you need to know in your past they haven't given it to you, read the book. Read the instructions. Yeah. And while you're at it, turn to the back. Yeah. When you turn to the back, you'll find out the two things. There are winners. Yeah, uh -huh. Amen. Amen. There ain't people who meet halfway up, somewhere in the middle of it. We didn't win, we ain't lose. And our kin folk gonna pray us into heaven. Yeah. We got a chance. <laughs> that ain't what the book says. 